Welcome to uh, Why So Serious, the best and worst of October edition 2012. This is Brogan Hayes. This is Rory Cashin. And we're going to uh, tell you the three best and three worst films of uh, October 2012. In our humble opinion. Yeah. Mm. The third best film of the month was Paranormal Activity 4. Which you didn't see. No, because I'm a giant mouse. Yes. And if you've watched our Halloween special, you'll know that. Yeah. yeah. This is the first one not to focus on the two scary sisters from the first three films. And it's to do with neighbours and they get creepy new neighbours and there's kids and imaginary friends and blah, blah, blah. The plot's not important. Um, <laughs> what is important is that they do their best to scare you shitless. And yeah, I'm never going to watch that film. I wouldn't never, recommend it. Never, ever going to watch that now, film. Now, I know a lot of people who can't watch it because they just have a fear of stuff in their house and then they're like, well, I'm moving now because of that film. It's, it's good. It's, they, they use Xbox Connect motion sensors, night vision, Clever. and a talking house alarm oh God. to uh, <laughs> to to ramp up the tension. And uh, and yeah, it's it's I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people do not, but I did. And it's it's my goddamn show. Yeah. <laughs> Out of ten, I give it a seven. Number two. Second best film of October two thousand and twelve, according to me. Yeah. Is Beasts of the Southern Wild. Um, it's the first film from the director Ben Zaitlin, and I really hope I'm saying his name properly because if I'm not, I'm really sorry. Um, and it's set in this very rural community in Louisiana. They live in the swamp in an area that they affectionately call the bathtub. And the story focuses on this eight year old, is she eight or is she at six? She's a little girl anyway, and it's all about her kind of coming of age story at a very young age like her dad's not well physically and, or mentally yeah and there's a storm threatening their entire community and their way of life the kid in it i'm not even going to try and pronounce her name but she is absolutely amazing and the fact that most of the people in it are non-actors gives this kind of degree of realism beautifully shot yeah great soundtrack yeah, yeah. really moving as well for me anyway because i have a bit of a, a love of louisiana in the south that's so where like, we differ it's not for everyone no, I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah. It's, not for, it's not for everyone. But it was for me. Yeah. And this is my show! <laughs> <laughs> so out of ten, I would give it seven. As well? Yeah. Yeah. So why is that number seven two? The other just, seven was number three. We just tied. We only have two, I don't know, two categories this month. Right. Yeah. So. Let's give it seven and a half then. All right, fine. I give it seven and a half out of ten. Just to make it feel like there's some kind of <sighs> proper Progression. League. All right, fine. The number one film. The number one the number film. The number one film. For October 2012, best film was Let the Sky Fall. Sky Fall is where we start. Let it crumble. You can stand tall. I'm faking. It's really good. So, Daniel Craig's back for the fir third, for the third time yep. um, as Mr. Bond and. Javier Bardem is the villain, Raul, Raul Silva, Silva, one of the best Bond villains ever, my ever. Uh Naomi Harris and the insanely beautiful Berenice Malo oh, are the Bond girls. Um, Raul Silva, Javier Bardem, is this kind of shadowy terrorist who's threatening MI6 and M and their whole way of operation and basically from the very beginning everything is just thrown into chaos by Javier Bardem. Yeah. But you don't see him for the first like hour and 15 minutes that he's this character who's really just a spectre kind of hanging over yeah. MI6. Bond fans will like my use of the word spectre there. Oh, oh I didn't even get it. Was uh, that so sort of, yeah, you see? brilliant? It kind of goes into M's backstory as well and a little bit of Bond's history as well. But I'm, I, it's really hard to review the film without giving anything away. A whole lot away. We yeah. can only give like a quantum of information away. Oh. Oh. That, was, that was really lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to do something. She got the fucking edge of me with the spect... I feel like you've been low... Like, spectre line. Just it's secret. okay, you can take solace in the fact that that quantum line... Ah! Yeah, we can't talk about it too much. Um, but everything about it's really great. Roger Deakins. Richard Deakins? Roger Deakins? Cinematography. Fantastic cinematography. Absolutely stunning. Uh, Thomas Newman. Score. Score is fantastic. Yeah. Sam Mendes directing. Well done you. John Thank Logan, you. new screenwriter. Uh, yeah, well thank God you. they got rid of uh, Paul Haggis. I'm sorry, yeah. Paul Haggis. Crash was great, but you really haven't done anything good since then. No. So, yeah, fantastic. Out of 10. 
Nine. I'd give it a nine. I actually would give it a nine, but I was afraid you were going to give it an eight, so I wanted to match your score. No. So in David's about nine. Yeah. Nine. Nine. Unanimous. Yeah. Unanimous. <laughs> oh. Take that, bitch. So the worst films of October 2012. You haven't seen what I think is the worst film. No. Nope. And it snuck in in third place by being released on the 31st of October. Uh, it's Silent Hill Revelations. <laughs> Um, it's it's really really bad. It's a horror film that isn't scary, and it's based on one of the greatest video games ever made, and they've completely fucked it up. Uh, the if you haven't seen the first one, it's gonna be like a spoiler thing. So you would put like a spoiler thing here, I think here. or maybe like the time code saying skip forward to when I start talking about it. At the end of the first one, um, the lead the lead girl was possessed by a demon. That's so awkward. Yeah, and all of the bad people were killed. At the start of the second one, the lead girl's fine. No, not a, not a, not a thing wrong with her. And all of the the cult people, the bad people, are, alive. are, are still there. That's really awkward. And it's just not even mentioned, not even referenced what the hell's going on. Everything that's good about it is the same stuff that was good with the first film. It looks great and they just stole the soundtrack wholesale from the video game. But the plot makes no sense. It's not scary. Uh, it's just really, really bad. It's just but disappointingly bad from a video game fan. And a, and a movie, movie fan. fan. And a fan of life. <laughs> so. Out of ten. Two. Next is Fun Size. <laughs> I haven't seen this. You will, you just count yourself lucky. I count my blessings every day. You count yourself. This girl, Ren, played by Veronica Justice, um, her dad has died and she's taking um, they she's taking her brother trick or treating because they always loved Halloween and it was always a thing with her dad. But they just get into these ridiculous scrapes and the kid goes missing in a haunted house and they have to find the kid and there's all these, like for a film made by Nickelodeon, there's all these really inappropriate sex jokes and that are not funny and Johnny Knoxville turns up and he's not funny and Chelsea Handler's in it and I don't know why. Um, and I spent the whole film thinking that this was a spin-off of a TV show because the characters are just introduced, they're not developed and they're just taken through the whole film. But it's actually not. It's just really badly written. No sympathy for any of these characters, didn't care by the end whether she found her brother or not, even though his Halloween costume is kind of cool. What was it? It was Spider-Man, but instead of putting his arm through this arm of the costume, he put in like a torn off arm so it looked like Spider-Man had lost his arm. That was kind of interesting for like a five-year-old. But okay. the kid doesn't talk through the whole film and you're thinking, oh, it's because of trauma because his dad died. It's not. It's so he can play pranks on his mom on the phone. Out of ten? One and a half. One and a half. The vast film of the month of October of 2012. Shouldn't have been the worst film. Shouldn't have been. Shouldn't have been. In the same way that the original shouldn't have been as good as it was. Mm. They should not have been as bad as it was. Mm. And it's taken two. Liam Neeson's on assignment in Istanbul and Famke Janssen and his really annoying daughter go over to meet up with him and have family holiday to recover from her being taken the first time. Yeah. But this time, Liam Neeson is taken. And his wife. And his wife as retaliation for all the faceless henchmen that he killed in the film. first one was 18s, this one's 12s A. Oof. People get killed by caressing their face. <laughs> really and bad dialogue, like just, really, really bad dialogue. Yeah, awful. And, it's just, and I think it, it's, it suffers the most from comparison. Yeah. Rather than it just being a standalone bad film. It's yeah. bad compared to how good it should have been. Um, the original had all that mystery. You didn't know where she was taken. You didn't know who she was taken by. And it was all Liam Neeson trying to find her and, you know, being all surprisingly action hero -y. Yeah. In this one, you know exactly who's taken him from the first scene. You know exactly where he is. And they're trying to make... What's her name? Maggie? Grace. Grace into a action hero. No, no. not going to work. And Famke Janssen's uh, eyebrows are really distracting. So, yeah, there's only literally one good scene in the film and it involves grenades and a map and a pencil and a bit of string. Oh, yeah. If they hadn't made that kind of stupid scene all across the film, mm. it would have been fun, but instead it's just that one thing. And because it's just that one scene, I'm just giving it one out of ten. Yeah, I would agree with that. One out of ten. No. Still not as bad as the Three Stooges. No. But it's pretty bad. Are yeah. we mm. doing like a quick preview of November? Argo. 
Master? Yep. Rise of the Guardians. That oh, looks pretty yeah. good. Yeah. It won some award in America, Best Animation Film or something. Yeah, yeah I've seen bits of it. It's Three beautiful. potentially good films for you to watch. Yep. So, so that's it. Yeah, until next time. I've been Brogan Hayes. I've been Rory Cashin. And this has been Why So Serious. It's, it's been me, yep. Dean, and Brian. Yay! 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 Good job, Prue. And thank you to the IFI. Titty fuck me. Ha, 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 ha.